I'm Tony, and the world is starting to feel like a pretty small place. I'm here at Temple, where I've been going for a few years now, and uh, cool thing is you can bump into people from just about anywhere in the world here. Uh, over the past, like, I don't know, I want to say over the past, like, 100 years, but it's been going on for longer, borders have been getting fuzzier. In some cases, they've been going away altogether. Governments have been setting up these multinational alliances, stuff like that. And there seems to be this trend away from nations being isolationist and all caught up in their own affairs and towards, well, cooperation. Some people think that eventually this is going to result in a world without borders. Some people really don't like that idea. And there's reason not to like it. For a long time, borders really did represent the, uh, the only way to, well, to keep your country and your people safe. The world's a different place now, though. And I do think there's a very good argument for cooperation on a global scale and for a world without borders. Someday, maybe not anytime soon, but someday. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about why a goal like that is so important. Why cooperation is so important. I'm gonna make my point in an unconventional way, but stick around. I don't think it comes as a surprise to anyone that we don't know exactly how life got started on this planet. That's because life is some really complicated stuff. The information that we do have points to life emerging a very long time ago. The crazy climate of the Earth in the 500 million or so years after its formation allowed big organic molecules to react with each other in a variety of ways in many places for a long time. These organic molecules weren't alive, not by a long shot, but at some point they started to react to things in ways that would cause them to replicate themselves or rise in complexity. This is the part that we're still pretty fuzzy on. We speculate that it went on this way, organic molecules reacting and rising in complexity, for quite some time. Eventually, though, we believe that this led to the development of two big types of molecules that carry information needed for life, proteins and nucleic acids. The nucleic acids in particular were very interesting because they were capable of orchestrating their own self-replication. With this, it is estimated that life officially kicked off around the 3.8 billion years ago mark, when one of these nucleic molecules got itself enclosed in a membrane. This self-replicating molecule, now with its own layer of protection, and this is a big part as far as life is concerned, the ability to maintain an internal environment, replicated more successfully than the others. So, with time, there were a lot of them. They worked on figuring out how to turn materials in the environment into more cells, and for a while, that was life on Earth. In many ways, it still is. Basic life like this still exists everywhere on Earth, even inside of you right now. But, of course, things would get more interesting. It's theorized that the next big leap occurred by mistake, if you can call it that, Cells were still very simple. They didn't have the specialized parts that those in your body do now. Until, some scientists speculate, one cell ate another and didn't digest it, working with it and forming a symbiotic relationship where they both benefited. This gave rise to a new type of life, eukaryotic cells with specialized organelles for doing specialized tasks. Needless to say, they were very successful at this whole living thing, and they had lots of room to grow and rise in complexity. Time check. It's about two billion years ago, or about half the time between when life started and now. Another cool thing is about to happen. Some of the eukaryotes are starting to form clumps, cooperating with each other to obtain resources and make more cells. Now, while these organisms were less like the trees and leaves we're familiar with today, and more like slimes and algae, not even quite like that, they were the first multicellular organisms, and unsurprisingly at this point, they were successful. Complexity continued to rise and has been rising ever since. From here, life really does explode. We humans have been keeping track for only a tiny fraction of this time. 
Right now, some 99% of all the species that have ever lived are extinct. Most don't make it, but some do better than others. Let's talk about two of them. First, let's talk about ants. They're old, beginning to show up around 99 million years ago. The overwhelming majority of species do not make it that long, but is it really that surprising that ants have? They've got a reputation among humans. Wise in some folklore, but generally they're just a pain in the ass for most people. They're so prominent and annoying because they're really, really successful as far as life goes. They display memory, learning, and the ability to correct mistakes. More importantly though, they know how to cooperate. Almost perfectly. They divide their workloads to get stuff done in a system that is believed to be 30 to 40 million years old. That is a hell of a lot longer than humans have been doing it, and it definitely shows. Nobody agrees how many ants there are on the planet, but estimates put that number somewhere between 100 trillion and 10,000 trillion. That number is big enough that nothing I say right now will really do it much justice, so just know that's a lot. But let's talk about humans. We're evidence that cooperation isn't just powerful on a small scale. There are almost 8 billion of us alive today. It is exceedingly rare that animals our size with our diets are able to support numbers like this. And yet, we do, because we work together. And as a result, we have science, medicine, technology, all things that one person or even a small group of people have almost no chance of figuring out on their own, let alone in one lifetime. Think about how long that took. Four billion years ago, some molecules start making copies of themselves. Early cells form relationships in which they merge, and by two billion years ago, whole entire colonies of cells were working together. It took more than another billion years for anything resembling animals to arise, but with time, they did. Around 600 million years ago, to be exact. So many species born into this world and snuffed out of it, but some survived, Often those that could work together to advance their species survived more and better. Ants, again, really are amazing and old. And then there's us, humans. We've been around for about 200,000 years and the majority of that time is completely lost to history because outside of small groups, we weren't working together much. However, and I wanna take a moment to say that we will be covering this in more detail at some point, Humans learned to work together. In the past few thousand years specifically, we've built societies. We've survived the apocalypse multiple times and tamed, to an extent, the lands we live on. In the past few hundred years, we got so good at it that damn near nothing on this planet can touch us now, besides ourselves and the planet itself. A few hundred years of blistering advancement and now there are eight billion of us. So. That's kind of my point, actually. I've noticed a pattern in the story I just told. If you want to live on this earth and you want to stick around, you've got to do one of two things. One, you can just be that tough. It doesn't really work for big things like us, but for cockroaches or say the water bear, it means nothing can really touch you unless the world really changes. But for the rest of us, there is really only one way to avoid extinction, cooperate. From the earliest forms of life to today, the ones that learn not to kill each other, and better yet, to prop each other up, those organisms have consistently done the best. From slime colonies to ants to humans. Though, let's be real right now, the ants have us beat. We still do not cooperate well enough to last 100 million years. In any case though, cooperation is clearly key. We see over and over and over that you either learn to work together to survive in an uncaring universe, or you stagnate and something will come along to end your journey. This philosophy that cooperation is the way forward is one that I intend to push on this channel. I'm not trying to preach some communist agenda or trying to suggest that individuality is bad or anything like that. In fact, I think that human individuality is what makes humans so unique. But I want to make it clear that there is a trend in life on this planet where general cooperation among individuals and a species seems to be the one and only way forward. And if you think that we humans are in any way different, well, I wouldn't hedge my bets on it. We're still stuck on Earth and the way we're running things right now, we may not be comfortable here much longer. 
So that's it. That's why cooperation is so important. I really do think it's the only way our story won't end right here where it began, whether that's in 50 years or 5,000. In either case, it's something we've got to start thinking about because our species has about three to four billion more people on the way before our numbers should hopefully stabilize. And we've also got climate change and super volcanoes and a few people who don't want to play along to contend with. If we don't take on these issues as a team, we're in trouble. We don't have to be in trouble. I'm Tony Pearson. This is Long Story Short. Hello, and thank you so much for watching this video. I've been meaning to start a YouTube channel like this one for a while, and I just haven't had the equipment, time, skills in some cases to actually do it. Until now, I've, I've got most of those things. I'm kind of struggling on the time part, but working on it. Um, this video is one I've been wanting to make for a while, just because I've never really heard the argument for uh, the importance of cooperation and stuff like that taken from this angle Part of why I might not have heard about it because it might just be a really cool way to frame the uh, the question and answer the question It could also just be a really dumb way to frame the question and answer the question So if you have opinions on that, I would really appreciate it if you'd let me know in the comments just because You know, hey, it would be good to know moving forward um, additionally, if you like this channel, please give this video a like and feel free to subscribe. I'll be trying to do one of these every week if I can manage it. So uh, stay tuned. We've got more cool content coming. Thank you again for watching this video. I hope to be hearing some opinions down in the comments below. I'm Tony, and I think I've already, I think this might be the third time I've said this now. I'm not sure how many are going to make it into the final cut, but this is Long Story Short. Thank you.